It's starting to fog up. All right, so today we're working on a 2000, actually, I don't know what it is, DD-16 and a Freightliner. And uh, currently have some fault codes active. Let's see if we can flip the screen around quickly. Which will let me do it. So it looks like the motor control module is completely offline. We're actually getting the common powertrain controller throwing a fault code saying, hey, how come the motor control module is offline? So now this has led to a no crank, no start condition for this Freightliner. So here we've checked all the powers, the fuses, A little bit of corrosion back there, but nothing that's causing our problem. And they like to stuff it in there. So there's the motor control module. Let's see if we can't get a better angle from down below. Kind of hard to make out. But that's where the control module is. Up in the frame rail between the engine block and the left side frame rail. So we're in the process of trying to check for power and grounds and the communication lines. But unfortunately, this connector is not cooperating. Been on this for about 20 minutes now and the connector is stripped. So we currently have a stripped tooth about halfway up the cantilever action and it's not allowing these square rectangle tabs to drop down and actually release the physical connection of the MCM connector. All right guys, so I finally got the connector off and I wanted to share with you a little trick on how to get these cantilever style connectors off when everything is stripped. So the trick is to get a bunch of penetrating oil in there, blow it out with compressed air as much as you can, and then you actually have to grab it with, I like to use a 90 degree O-ring pick, and you actually have to physically pull that down both sides while wiggling the connector back and forth. This is, my, in my opinion, the only way to get this connector off and to be able to continue our troubleshooting with this truck. Okay, so it is now time to check for our propers, proper prep. So now that we finally have this connector out of the frame rail, it's a little bit more accessible. I can check my powers and grounds and continue on with this diagnosis. So this will be the first step in determining whether we have a bad module or bad power circuits. So let's try and set up this camera so that we can actually see what's going on while I'm working. Okay. Okay, so after looking at the schematics, I was able to determine that pin 11 is supposed to be constant power, as well as pin 12. 14. And 15. So right there, seeing those numbers and knowing that it should have battery voltage, and trust me, I have checked battery voltage. We are sitting at around 12 volts. After 
checking these measurements, I believe that we have a bad constant power circuit not allowing this module to turn on. So we will just quickly test for continuity on the constant ground. Wrong pin, my apologies. So pin five. Pin six. I believe it's pin eight. And pin nine. Okay guys, so I swapped multimeters just to make things a little bit easier. This one's got a magnet, so it kind of freestands. Um, I want to show you by doing a massage test on this harness, you just follow it from one end to the other. You can see some fluctuations in the voltage readings. And this is how I find an open circuit or not just an open circuit, high resistance circuits. Oh, we got it up to 2.5. Wonder where that could be. I think it's narrowed down to this general area. Seems like ah, hard to recreate. But I think we did get the 2.5 volt spike on camera just to show you the proof of concept. So I'm gonna go do some more diagnosis and I'll come back to you in a bit. So we actually got about five volts more than what we used to have by just wiggling the harness at this main distribution box. Just kind of have your way with it and you can actually see voltage increase and voltage decrease although i've already had this whole fuse box distribution box apart looks like i have to check voltage at all these fuses again which i did with a test light earlier i had nice bright lights which indicates good voltage but there might be an issue here that's uh, preventing circuit conductivity. You're really gonna need two hands to get this thing out. I think. So I'm in the process of taking this fuse box out. You see these numbers are jumping all over already. So I think we're in the right area. Oh. She went up even higher that time. Oh, she's really stubborn. Okay, so I think we're moving in the right direction here. <laughs> Why you won't this go off? There we go. All right, guys, we have found the problem. Finally, after all of that stupid fall tracing, it's actually a socket, pin socket, in the fuse box. I should have known this when I did take this cover apart. There was a bunch of like corrosion and stuff that fell out. Um, I mean, I have seen worse fuse boxes work. And uh, this one here it's actually going to be this fuse socket right here and the connector is all spread open and there's no way that we can accurately get consistent voltage through there so what I'm going to do is try to remove this pin and pull it out of here see if we can replace it um, Wonder if there's any spare slots in here that we could send 
send some power to or possibly steal a pin from in order to get this truck back up on the road. So I pulled the little lock mechanism tab out and you can actually see this pin a lot better. Um, let's look at a known good one. Looks like there'd be some really nice pin contact. It's not always this easy guys. You have to be able to trace it back and find why the circuit is behaving the way that it is. Okay guys, so we managed to get our good steady voltage at the MCM connector. And I want to stress the fact, like I have in previous videos, that checking voltage alone with a multimeter is insufficient. We actually have to load the circuit to see if it can carry a load. If the load can be carried, you can rule out the circuit integrity as being the problem and continue on troubleshooting. In this case, our problem was having poor pin contact let me just zoom out here poor pin contact at this pin at the fuse box so what I did was I removed it lightly scuffed it up reinstalled it and now we have our voltage it's funny that something so simple could cost thousands of dollars in repairs now for the task of reassembling this broken connector, it's pretty simple. First steps first is you have to free up these two red tangs on each side. So I like to use compressed air. Get rid of all the dirt and the grime in there. And then we have to install, I shouldn't say install, but we have to apply some penetrating oil and move these back and forth to be able to reinstall our yellow counter lever assembly. So if you can get these red tangs out without damaging them, you're home clear. Because now you can clean them up, reassemble the connector, and it should slide like it was brand new.
open, which is our current position. Ah, oh, what a beautiful feeling. Feel that connector, it's like rejuvenated. Like it used to be when it was brand new. Except, looks like we have stripped teeth and disassembling it next time will be kind of a nuisance. You can get it to work, you just have to squeeze It's a little tricky, but it's a lot better. Hopefully we don't have to get in here anymore. Once we plug it in, we're done forever. So I don't really like doing this. We just added a little bit more pin tension. And I feel comfortable that we shouldn't have any more issues. I will install a little bit of dielectric grease and try to clean up the pin contact a little bit better. But this is a prime example of not needing any parts in order to perform these repairs okay so we're ready to confirm this repair Let's see if the truck starts hey there we go CPC4 after treatment module and our motor control module MCM is currently status online so that means that we can confirm this repair and send this truck back on its way